Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. Some people say that Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. I probably have to disagree with that. It's seed starting time, and we're going to work on starting some of our seeds today. We're going to talk about what seeds we're starting, and I want to give you an idea on how you can get paid to start your garden. So stick around to the end, and uh, let's talk about getting some seeds started. It's gardening time. So, as y'all know, we're here in Central North Carolina, and it's the 1st of February, and it's still kind of cold. Um, but we've got this cool little greenhouse that we bought a couple of years ago. I think it's about a, it's about a 6 by 10 I think it's a Harbor Freight green, greenhouse. Found it on Craigslist. I think we paid 200 bucks for it. Brought it up to the farm, set it up. This is going to be our third season unit. This thing is great. Um, we can get a lot of stuff started out here. Um, I built some tables and that kind of thing. But today we're going to be starting some cold hardy plants uh, to get them ready to go in the garden so let's take a look at what we're uh, starting and uh, let's talk about some of the tools you're going to need uh, to get everything up and running so you want to start with a good seed starting mix we just picked this up this is jiffy um it's just a seed starting mix we got this at tractor no we got this at rural king so you want to start with a good seed starting mix not like some homemade compost or something like that because it may still have some weed seeds in it but you want a good um, uh, sterile mix to get your seed started with put a little water in our seed starting mix just to moisten it down get a little bit of moisture so we got our uh, seed starting mix with some water just kind of mix that up this time of year the water's really cold um, because we're on a well but um, that'll slow things down for a couple days but we got to get it started so here in the greenhouse um, we've got a couple of tables that I built on both sides these are just real basic made out of simple two befores just a super easy shelf they do have some slats between them for drainage from whenever you're watering over top I also got a heater back here um, this is just a little electric heater that we bought at Northern Tool plug that in it's got a thermostat control on it keeps it nice and toasty in here at night it does get pretty good and warm in here during the day uh, especially if we've got some good sunshine so we've got a heater I do have some lights um, and we'll work on our lights but whenever we're just starting our seeds to germinate them you really don't need any light you're just trying to get those seeds germinated once they pop up through the soil or through that seed starting mix then you're going to worry about putting your light on but for right now light's not a big deal got all kinds of different trays oh there's one we forgot another beet early wonder beet so we've got all kinds of trays uh different i think we've got some 72 cell some 128 cell um, some bottom water trays we've got just some open bottom trays got lots of these little cups you know if we decide we want to do stuff in cups we can break those apart and then we've got some of the little plastic um, dome lids for um, sweating and keeping the moisture in and then more trays so lots of stuff here to work with so let's get one of these I think these are 72 cell trays let's get one of these and uh, let's get some stuff started okay so what we're going to start today is stuff that is cold hardy and is going to do well uh, in cold weather now we're going to wait until um you know we get a little closer to frost time uh, or the last frost time before we actually put anything out in the garden but now is a perfect time to make use of a small greenhouse to get your stuff started so that whenever it is time for it to go out in the ground um, you're off and running so a couple things we're going to start today uh, we've got some detroit dark red beets we're going to start a few of those we got some Swiss chard or the rainbow variety. This is one of my favorites. I love this stuff. This is fantastic. So uh, some rainbow Swiss chard. We've got some red romaine lettuce. We grow that every year. We have that stuff in spades. It, it does really good here on our property. Uh, we're going to start a little broccoli. And eh, not a broccoli fan, but okay. Um, butter crunch lettuce. Wonderful stuff. This is one of Saunders' favorites. Uh, so we're going to start some butter crunch lettuce. Uh, we're going to start some black seeded Simpson. We grew this last year. This stuff done really well, and it's got a great flavor. Um, it's really pretty lettuce. Goes great on a salad as a garnish. I mean, black seeded Simpson. Good stuff. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of arugula. That's some little bitty seed stuff. I hope. Um, we're going to do some spinach. Love spinach. Uh, some baby romaine lettuce. Tender greens. This stuff is wonderful, especially whenever it's just first starting out. It's just it's fantastic. And then a little uh, dwarf blue scotch kale try some of that all right so we're going to start out with a 172 cell tray and we're also going to use a bottom water tray for this now the difference in a bottom water tray uh, versus just a regular tray is this if you'll notice it doesn't have any perforations or any holes at all in it it's just a solid bottom 
So whenever you're putting your uh, plants in here or you're putting your tray in, if you want to water from the bottom instead of water across the top, you can just fill your tray up with water and then the water will just um, wick back up through your seed starting mix or your compost or whatever you're using back up into the cell and uh, will feed the roots. So that's a nice little, uh, nice little feature on those. So we've got a 72 cell tray. Let's put some seed starting mix in here and uh, we'll kind of tamp it down a little bit. We'll show you how we do that and we'll get some seeds going. So we've got our mix. It's a little damp, but that's okay. We're just gonna get us a nice big bunch in here so we can start filling our, our cells up. Make sure you got, just get plenty in there. All right. So once you get a good amount of your seed starting mix, just go ahead and use your fingers and kind of tamp it down into your uh, trays. You got this a little wet. That's all. Let's try a little baby romaine lettuce. Little America spinach. Y'all, this is blister. She shows up after the work's done. <laughs> We're gonna see how this does. I put this uh, seed starting mix in here. And I'm just planting like one, like spinach, just one seed per cell. What do you think? See how that goes. Warm in there. Huh? Warm in there. That's the idea. I'm going to use a little bit of dry starting, starting mix to just cover this up. And then to label, we just put a piece of masking tape and then mark it off in sections on which plants or which seeds were planted. And then just goes right on top. Now we know what we got. So I don't want to steer y'all wrong. I am not a master gardener by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the thing that I've learned about gardening over, gardening over the years is you just got to try different stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So a lot of this sometimes for us is just an experiment. But if you're interested in somebody that knows how to garden, a couple channels that we like to watch, number one is Charles Dowding. He does a lot of really cool stuff. No dig, he's English. I love to hear the guy talk. Um, another one is Jason over at Coghill Farms. He does a lot of cool stuff. He's a great gardener. And then Josh Satin. Josh is actually right here in North Carolina. He's about, I don't know, he's about an hour away from us. He does a lot of cool stuff, a lot of market gardening. So if you're looking for gardening videos, those are the guys that we'd recommend that you watch. All right, let's try a big 128 cell tray and see what we can get in it. Let's try some of this black seeded Simpson. So early on, I said I was going to talk about how you could get paid to start your own garden. Let's talk about that for just a second. Later on in the spring, a lot of folks are going to be going to the big box stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, you know, their local garden center, whatever, and buying plants. And typically they're going to pick up, you know, a four pack of these, you know, a little four pack of plants, lettuce, tomato plants, pepper plants, whatever. And they're going to pay usually about a dollar a piece for those. Well, instead of them buying them from those guys who typically have not a whole lot of selection when it comes to variety, how about you start some plants and sell them yourself? So, for example, here's a pack of lettuce. This pack of lettuce is $1.89. Get two packs of this, and you're gonna be able to start probably 200 lettuce plants. 200 lettuce plants, sell those at a dollar a piece, that's 200 bucks. Take away your $4 for this, a couple bucks for your trays, a couple bucks for some um, seed starting mix. It's almost pure profit to to start seeds. You can also buy different varieties. You're not bound to whatever Bonnie or whoever those guys are that they're selling down at the big box stores have got. You can pick different varieties. Get heirloom varieties, stuff that people are looking for that are just not very common anymore. Black Seeded Simpson. I don't know that I've ever seen a Black Seeded Simpson plant out. Maybe I have, but anyway, um, offer those different varieties. It's a great way for you to make a little extra cash. You can pay for your garden and that's just lettuce plants. Think about tomatoes, peppers, um, onion starts, 
um, collards. I mean, just all care, all kinds of different well, probably not carrots, all kinds of different stuff that you can get started, um, and just sell those as part of your as part of your farm enterprise. Pack them up, take them with you to the farmers market. Lots of folks are there typically in the spring, not only looking for good fresh local stuff, but they're also looking for plants, and that's just a great way to add a little bit of income to your farm. So think about starting plants and selling those starts as potential income. So springtime's coming, it's getting closer. We got the greenhouse fired up now. This is just the start. We're gonna have a bunch more plants, a bunch more seeds that we're gonna get started. Um, hoping to have a bigger garden this year. Like I've said, we don't do a market garden just for the pure purpose of selling vegetables, but we do tend to sell a lot of excess stuff that we don't, you know, we don't eat. We just can't eat, you know, 50 pounds of lettuce a week. Um, that'd really clean out your pipes. But we just decide not to, not to do that. And we make sure that we've got a little bit extra to sell. So I'm gonna post a link over here to a couple other gardening videos, some stuff that we done early on in the last, early on in the year last year. Um, check one of those out. Hey, if you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We got a lot of stuff going on. Baby lamb should be coming. I was expecting turkey poults today. Um, that's not looking good. We'll see how that works out tomorrow, hopefully. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.